We're excited to welcome this guy to our realm. Uh, was able to hang out with him the other night, had a fantastic time. He was a very gracious, gracious host. Jonathan Hutton from OutKick. I'm going to let him tell you where you can find all his info. Him and Chad do an incredible job. Jay Hutt, what's up, dog? Uh, good morning, guys. And uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a little light on the the attendance. We got to get the the whole crew together. Next listen, time. listen. It's it's now that uh, David again. He's got three under three. So whenever I can smuggle him out, it's like <laughs> Owen Wilson from Behind Enemy Lines. We're just trying to find that beeping chair in the snow. Uh, and then Blaine, God knows what he's doing. So we'll we'll yeah, get well, him. Okay. Uh, we'll get him over there. God he's, does know. Yeah, God does know, and that's the problem, <laughs> Jonathan. Um, but look, I, I want to start. You know, we let off the show. We have the draft coming up this week, obviously. Kind of some sneaky, under-the-radar picks. We think guys are going to outperform their draft position. I went with Spencer Rattler. David went with Ricky Pearsall. Blaine went with Luke McCaffrey. Is there a guy that you watched this past year or maybe a couple that you think may fall in the draft a little bit but may end up outproducing where he was picked? I mean, uh, for me, it's Michael Penix Jr. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm going high in the draft for him. I mean, if he's if he falls to the second round, I think – they're getting. I mean, the team's getting great value there. I think he's in a in a in a realm where he's not injured throughout his college career. I mean, the injuries were a couple of years ago, but I mean, I think this guy's the second or third quarterback taken. I think he should have won the Heisman Trophy personally, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm putting him on that list just because it's it's a situation where we're not mentioning him or Bo Nix. Yeah. But we're mentioning the quarterbacks right above them, and JJ McCarthy's one of them. Uh, no, sorry about that, David. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking at this guy. <laughs> oh, I agree. Uh, where, where is where's Michael Penix Jr. in this? Yeah. Um, you know, Hendon Hooker was talked about more a year ago than this mm-hmm. guy, and we just saw him uh, with Roma Dunze and, and a, a, a they had a four pack of receivers at Washington that will end up being NFL wide receivers. So I'm I think the quarterback has to benefit from that. He. He will, but he but he hasn't to the, the the to the level I thought he would, and I yeah. think he's going to go to a great situation where he's probably going to back up a, a a solid starter, and that ends up being very beneficial because that means he's going to have some stability with the head coach and the offensive coordinator for a bit, and not be like Caleb Williams where he's going to be switching offensive systems a year from now with a new head coach. Yeah, and it, it's funny, you know, you, you look at the difference in sports. A left-handed quarterback. It's kind of viewed as as out there or yeah. different or maybe not as attractive in football, but a left-handed pitcher in baseball, you're the hottest chick at the dance, even if you're five <laughs> miles per hour slower from the left side. It's kind of weird the way it's looked at like that. The injury part to me, and David, you brought this up, he did go the last couple of years without getting hurt. Yeah. And in reality, you're safer in the NFL as a quarterback than maybe anywhere on earth when it comes to them protecting you. Like the strike zone gets smaller, it seems like every single year. But when I look at Penix, and I look at, at translation to the NFL, right? There's not a coverage he hasn't seen, right? There's not a throw that he can't make when you look at his arm strength and his ability. I, is it one of those situations where he turns into maybe the Jordan Love a little bit of this draft where you get taken and you sit behind a guy for a couple years and you are truly ready? Now, hell, he may be 30. That'd be by great the time for him. That'd be better than going to New England or to With, I, I mean, if, right? I'm, yeah. if I'm Michael Penix, let's be honest. Listen, I want all the money. I get that. I understand that. But it's not like he's going to be broke. You'll get more money if you go to the right situation. That second contract. That, the situation matters yeah. so much, not just in terms of who the head coach and the offensive coordinator is, but just in terms of the division, the other quarterbacks that you're going to be uh, facing. I don't see a world in which this guy falls to the second round. That's mind-blowing to me. If it does, Someone needs to scoop him up immediately because he's my favorite pure passer in this draft. So I talked to Michael Penix Jr.'s uh, position coach this past Mm. week. He coached him at Indiana and at Michigan, and I asked about the injuries. I'm like, look, is there any cause for concern here? Because he had multiple injuries, and they were serious. And, you know, he was like, look, he just he threw for 9,000 yards the past two years, 4,500 each season, and stayed healthy. Like, Football is a collision sport. Anybody can get hurt at For any sure. time. You know? that's, that, that's exactly right. And, and Jonathan, I, I do want to ask, we also talked about Drake May, Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, the, the top of this draft, J.J. McCarthy. You have the number one pick. You're the Chicago Bears. Are you taking Caleb Williams at one? Yes, I am. Um, and, and that's, it's almost, it, it is out of necessity. But, um, man, I... I don't know about you guys. This this entire quarterback crop at the very top, I was very high on this group last August. Mm-hmm. And slowly that has dissipated into, I'm just kind of like, eh, I, I feel bad for some of the teams that are up there because, I mean, 
Caleb Williams is the cream of the crop, and that's that's not knocking him. He's he's solid. I mean, his dad and and he had been preparing for this moment since he was ten years old. Uh, he's got all of the traits. Uh, he can get out of the pocket. I mean, he's he's the guy. He is the prototypical type of quarterback that you want uh, in this era of the National Football League. But there are some intangibles there that um, I mean, I would have to really dig on, and I'd be sweating over about right about now. And it, it, it's a <laughs> It's the behind the scenes stuff, man. It's it's what I think a lot of the a lot of the guys uh, in college now are battling at the very very top of the the name image likeness and all of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. This guy's been having it uh, uh, dealing with it for for a while. Yeah. I mean, he's got a marketing team, uh, but he you know doesn't have a, a quote unquote agent. Um, his dad speaks a lot. Quite frankly, I'm I, I give him a props for. I thought we'd hear a lot more from him and his camp over the last mm-hmm. month and a half or so. We have it. I think that's a that's a positive. Uh, Drake May, I, I love the the alpha qualities of him. Uh, JJ McCarthy, the leader. I think JJ McCarthy is a better leader than than Caleb Williams. Um, but as far as the traits go, this guy's got the got everything in the box. So I'm, I'm taking Caleb Williams number one. And I'm I'm hoping that he can get in there and lead. Mm-hmm. I, I, that that's that's the 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 area that I'm uncertain about with him. Yeah. Um, and I'm not uncertain about it one bit with JJ McCarthy. But when you flip it over to just what I'm seeing on the field, uh, you don't talk about numbers. This guy can put it up, and I, in the NFL, he should have at least some semblance of a defense to help him out. Yeah, yeah, and a defensive head coach and Eberflus, and that's the right. At least the Bears can at least say then, hey, we took the most dynamic quarterback. Yeah, right. Like you can at least lean on that and just evaluate the off the field issues the best you can. So, go ahead. Can I can I jump in on this? Like yeah, the, the JJ McCarthy, what and he doesn't get enough credit for what happened last year at Michigan. Say whatever you want about Jim Harbaugh, the the players with the six games, the first three games, sure they should win those games. Uh, and, and I'm not, I mean nothing by this other than just how I, my perception of it. You know, JJ McCarthy found out about the same time that we all did, I guess, on the flight to Penn State that his head coach was going to be suspended. And all he did was go out there and, and lead that team, win and go about his business, beat a Maryland team without overlooking, or what was the team seemed to be overlooking towards Ohio State, but they won those three games after the Penn State game. He's the leader in the locker room. Sharon Moore's crying on the sideline. I mean, the, the perception of that is, is sticks out to me. Speaking mm-hmm. of crying, that's what Caleb Williams does when he lost <laughs> to, to Washington. So I'm 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 looking at this in a in, in that perspective and wondering how that translates. That is a huge positive for him. Caleb Williams to me has to go in and be about ball. I think he has been. I don't think he's talked as much as his father has. But there is something about painting the fingernails and doing all this stuff at Notre Dame that just uh, you, you're not going to do that on a routine basis in the professional locker room and actually lead that group uh, whenever you need to get a win in week 18 and guys are going to follow you. I just don't think that translates. I think J.J. McCarthy's leadership qualities do. Yeah, I don't know if you'll find another mindset like J.J. McCarthy's. We were talking about it earlier. He's obviously a proven winner. He's dialed into the nth degree. Steve Dace came on this program months ago and said, hey, he's about to blow people away in these meeting rooms, and that's what he's done. At the same time, if you're an NFL GM, you're doing your due diligence, they're going to go look at that Penn State game and say, oh, he didn't even throw a pass in the second half, and they beat sure, that team. Yeah. You know, Meanwhile, Caleb Williams is throwing it 45 times a game. Michael Penix Jr. is being asked to make 20 to 22 NFL throws per game. That's where yep. they're going to start to look at that. And what, what we were talking about with Jake earlier is like, if an NFL team, like say the Giants or the Raiders right now, or even the Broncos, which I want your opinion on, because they just traded for Zach Wilson. You know, if you can find the same value, you think at least, nobody knows for sure, but if you can find the same value in someone like a Spencer Rattler that you can find in a J.J. McCarthy, but you can get him in the second round and address uh, a bigger need in the first round, then they'll probably go that direction. Yeah, I- one thing that fascinates me about the draft process and where we're at, and and I think, to me, this is the way that I view it. I think this is the way that the GMs view it. When you look at Caleb Williams, let's just take Caleb Williams and J.J. McCarthy and, and put them side by side. Mm-hmm. I, I think there's some things that you know that are concrete about each, 
and there are things that you trust about each, but there's also something you don't trust, but that's the difference, right? So for J.J. McCarthy, the production from a throwing standpoint, you know he's a great leader, right? But you also know he was in the fastest car at the race. Michigan, and, in my opinion, Georgia and Michigan had the two fastest cars at the race, right? Georgia lost to Alabama in the SEC championship and didn't make it. You know J.J. McCarthy has the physical ability to get there. He's just not there yet. So that's the part you're not sure if you put J.J. McCarthy on a team that is one of the slowest cars. How long is it going to take to rev that damn thing up? Then on Caleb Williams' side, didn't do a ton of winning. You questioned some of the leadership. But he was able to stay in the race basically because he was a great driver. Mm -hmm. So if you put, if you take the leadership part out, do you believe basically that somebody can grow enough off the field to be able to meet their physical ability as opposed to J.J. McCarthy, who you're hoping can grow enough on the field to meet their mental ability? I think those are the differences, and I think that is the dynamic decision that you have to make as a GM. That's just the way yeah. I see it. Yeah, but you got to grow behind the scenes in the locker room and in your your uh, professional mentality, right? Yeah. Like, um, you know, I, I think there's a reason Mac Jones is down in Jacksonville. You mm -hmm. know, like there there there's a message being sent to Trevor Lawrence, and 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 to me, like Trevor Lawrence can fit all those qualities that that you're mentioning, Jake. But the the what happens on the field, coaching changes in year one. Uh, and and that sets you back a year. Uh, and just just from switching systems, uh, overall uh, the, the the philosophy of the new head coach that comes in, whatever it might be. Bryce Young's going through that right now in Carolina. Will Levis has got that here in mm -hmm. Nashville. Uh, meanwhile, C.J. Stroud's running it back with Bobby Slowick at, at offensive coordinator. Um, the, the, those the, the fits matter as well. And ultimately, it whatever Trey Lance. Whatever he was drafted by Shanahan, everyone, and including me, my God, this is going to be a perfect fit, right? If 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 Sean McVay ends up with a backup QB uh, to go in with Matthew Stafford, that he's going to be the next quarterback in waiting, and everyone's going to be great about everyone's going to feel great about that situation. Meanwhile, I, I don't feel great about Chicago right now. Uh, given the fact that their their head coach, I, I think, is more or less in a lame duck spot given what yeah. they've done at other coaching positions and how they're going about or trying to figure out the quarterback position with that type of offense that they'll have. And I, I'm looking around going, okay, uh, New England, they're in a, a, a retooling, rebuild mode. And Washington, who knows what's up with that offensive line. There are some bad situations. And then there are teams trying to move up. Minnesota, who think about the quarterback that ends up in Minnesota with Justin mm -hmm. Jefferson. Yeah. That I don't. That, I mean, put any quarterback in this group right now in the first round with Justin Jefferson. Then look at, <laughs> Michael Penix. Put Michael Penix. Yeah. with the Vikings, yeah. the guy you brought up earlier. That's listen. Yeah, I'm I mean, not a math teacher. That's a problem, buddy. So they're at Wait. eleven, Jonathan. They're at eleven. Yeah. Uh, you, you got the Broncos at twelve. Now we had been talking about both those teams are trying yeah. to move up, right? But then the Broncos just traded for Zach Wilson from the Jets yesterday. Is that going to keep them from trying to jump Minnesota now? Or does Minnesota no. now think, okay, maybe the Broncos won't jump us, so they don't try and make a move? Well, so here, here's here's what I'm thinking if I'm Denver. I just gave up a, a combined three first-round picks and three second-round picks for Sean Payton and Russell Wilson. <laughs> and I finally yeah. have a first-round pick again. Yeah. And I'm going to trade future first-round picks for which guy? Like, it, it, Sean Payton's in charge there. Yeah. So do I think that he's going to be sold on Zach Wilson and Jarrett Stidham? No. Um, do I think that he's probably in love with one of these guys not named Caleb Williams? Absolutely. I think the guy that they would be going after, uh, and, and I think Minnesota has ties to this guy too, and in fact, I know they do, and that's Drake May. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm the, the team we haven't heard of that is just locked in on a QB is, is New England. And then there's Arizona. But if you've got the three QBs and J.J. McCarthy is still available, the other three are off the board, where does that next QB fall in, in the top ten? And if yeah. it makes it, if they make it to like around seven, pick seven with Tennessee, I think that's type the, the type of jump they could make uh, to get ahead of, of Minnesota. I don't, I don't think we see a, a, a top four quarterback fall out of the top ten uh, yeah. because of the, the needs. It, put the Raiders in there, too. Uh, with what they need um, and, and the type of 
the, the type of winning they need to do, especially with Adams there. I, I think Denver's in the market. And uh, yeah, I don't think just because they trade for Zach Wilson and flop and flip flop late round picks that, that they feel set. Um, they need an upgrade and they just didn't trade away uh, Russell Wilson and pay all that money to go get a veteran. They're going to try to get a rookie on a rookie deal yeah, uh, and, and save some money that way and try to build him through Sean Payton's system. I, I, I am intrigued though with who, which quarterback that would be. And I think all the, the all the talk about Drake may and whether or not he's, he's uh, still the number two guy on the board. I think a lot of teams love that dude. I hope I, 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 I love him. I, I, I think he he's the coveted quarterback after number one. Yeah, mm. feels like Zach Wilson's an insurance policy to me. That's what it feels like. So, like yeah. he's in case you know, hey, we need to string this guy along. You got Stidham, Zach Wilson, maybe a young Zach. Guy. So if he wants to, I mean, the Jets last year, Zach showed some flashes. Yeah, well, I want to see Zach Sean with his flashes. hands on with Zach, Sean, but, right? Sometimes but, he, he could at least keep you from having to start a rookie right off the bat if mm-hmm. that guy doesn't come in and pick hey, it up right away. It's not the plane; it's the pilot. Yeah. Why is Why is a buffet better than a one course meal? You got options. Buddy. There you go. You got options. All right. Anything? All right. Let's go to Tito. He won't go, go ahead, ahead John. No, I was going to say, which, which which of the quarterbacks do you think is the Will Levis of this group? See, Meaning, I, I think it's shocked J- that he falls. I think it's J.J. McCarthy. I think this is a smokescreen with J.J. McCarthy for somebody to move up and get somebody. Not saying that J.J. won't end up being a good player. No. I have my doubts about Will because I think he's a little willy-nilly with the ball, but the NFL has a way to teach you to not to do that. Um, I think some people are setting up J.J. McCarthy so somebody will grab him and that will leave somebody else. That's just what I feel right now. Uh, Plus, I think the, and there's always one, right? There's always one quarterback yeah. every year who ends up getting talked about, and then we the camera's on him, and he's waiting around, and he doesn't get picked. Yep. It it doesn't always mean they end up being a bad player. The same thing happened with Aaron Rodgers. Rogers, I was just he's about a to top say that. five quarterback yep. all time. He was sitting there waiting around to be picked, and he never was. He's got his arms crossed. So it's not always a bad thing. I'd rather sit around and wait all day and go to a team like the Vikings Please. and put me in Washington or Please. put me in New England right now where I have to go be better than Aaron Rodgers and Tua Tagovailoa and Josh Allen right off the bat in that division, I think it might be Bo Nix, the way things are going I, right I don't now. think that's crazy. I'm going to be honest with you. I would rather go to the Bears. I would rather go to the team with the number one pick than the team with the number two or number I, I completely Which I, it's that. never like that. Like last year with the Panthers, God help Bryce Young. Yeah. God help him and Derek Brown. That's a yeah. totally— it, People are talking about, oh, Caleb Williams is going to say, no, I'm not going. I'm not going to Chicago. Well, guess what, buddy? Then you're screwed. No, the, the Bears could be sneaky good. If someone can come in and play quarterback, you know. Imagine they held on their defense was good enough last year. Yeah. Yeah. Even though their defense was better than what I thought after they lost. They, yeah. After That's why game. Eberflus is there. Yeah. It's certainly not for well, the offensive side. We'll, so we'll see how long you know. he's there. It's basically a Dr. Seuss Don't character. Don't trust a guy named Eberflus. Hey, I, I, think, I think this draft is more like the Mac Jones draft where – J.J. McCarthy just falls to one of these teams like Mac Jones did to New England. It's like, yeah. oh, of course. They sit at 15 and they get Mac Jones. This is Bill Belichick. That could be Minnesota. It, it could be just the Vikings yeah. sit there and wait, and uh, J.J. McCarthy falls to them. Yeah, look, I'm not, a, I'm not a geography major, but I do know Minnesota and Michigan are somewhat close to each other. Speaking of close, it's always a great time when uh, Jonathan joins us, the first ever debut. we got to have you back on again, man. Love going on y'all's show. Tell everybody where they can find your work over at OutKick because it's fantastic, man. Hot mic. Yeah, Let's get it. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Uh, Outkick.com slash watch is, is where you can check out Hot Mic with uh, me and Chad Withrow. And then uh, draft night this Thursday, Clay's going to jump in with us. We have a live stream nice. going over at Outkick.com mm. and on YouTube uh, and uh who knows where that conversation leads, right? <laughs> like your show. We're in the playground of life, right? For, for sure. Kick <laughs> back, talking sports, love it uh, for the escape. And, and here we go. The, the NFL draft where the where the ball used to play the sport is not even present is massive. Very, uh, very I, true. I love this. I love the debate. Love your guys' show as well. All right, man. We're going to live stream yeah. it. Maybe we should touch our streams. There Let us go. gingerly touch our tips. We'll, <laughs> well see. That's, Jonathan, well, Jonathan, thanks. That's why we have a new sound. Oh, don't yeah, play it. This guy. <laughs> Yo, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for hanging out. If you haven't already, we really appreciate it. Turn that notification bell on so you know when we drop content that you like to follow and we like to give.